Hey everybody. So today we're going to look at just kind of an introduction to motion. This is really our first step into the world of physics. One of the things that we're going to talk about, at least at the beginning of the year and, and actually considerably throughout, is we're going to talk about different types of motion and how we can describe motion. As we get more into it, we'll learn how to describe why motion changes and what affects that. And we'll get into that in our, our next unit. But for now, let's just get comfortable with the idea of describing motion. All right. The first thing we want to talk about is the difference between distance and displacement. All right. Now, distance, you're all comfortable with, right? You walk a trail, you take a path, you go up to the top of the mountain, it takes you two kilometers to get to the top of the mountain, right? Now, that is the length of the path, right? That's not how far it is from where you started to where you ended. That's how far the path is that you walk. That's a distance, okay? Distance is a scalar number. And as we've talked about, a scalar number is something that doesn't have a direction. A scalar number just has a value value and, and a unit, right? So a distance just follows the whole length of the path all the way from beginning to end and it adds up all of that length. That's a distance for you, okay? A vector is different in two ways. Displacement is different in two ways. Number one, it's a vector, okay? Now a vector has both a length and a direction, okay? So that's going to be important when we look at displacement because not only do we say how far it is, but we're also going to say what direction it is from the starting point to the ending point. And so the direction is also going to be important so that we can designate displacement. The other thing is that displacement isn't affected by the path, right? So again, thinking about that mountain where we're going back and forth on the switchbacks, you know, you might walk for two kilometers, but from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain might only be, I don't know, 750 meters, a thousand meters. It might only be a kilometer, right? And so the distance to the top of the mountain from the bottom straight line up to the top is shorter than the distance you had to walk. Displacement only recognizes the beginning and the end. And so it's just straight line as the crow flies from A to B, how far is it? And of course, what direction? So that's really the difference between distance and displacement. And hopefully we'll see that in a couple of examples here later on. All right, from there, we're ready to move on to speed and velocity. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is instantaneous speed. All right, so instantaneous speed is just a measure of how fast we're going right now. We will have ways to calculate it once we understand a little bit more about our kinematics here. But for now, we don't really have a formula because it's, it, we would need calculus to be able to do it from a motion graph, from information given to us. We can only find an instantaneous speed in one of two ways. If the speed is constant, then I can find the average speed. And then the instantaneous speed, obviously, it, during that time period is the same if the speed is constant. If the speed's not constant, then I have to do some more significant mathematics, which we're not quite ready for at this point. Okay? So either we'll be able to use an equation to calculate it later, or it'll just be given to us. All right, but instantaneous speed is just a measure of how fast I'm moving in this instant, right? If I were to maintain this speed, how far would I go for a certain amount of time, okay? The second thing we want to mention is average speed. Now, average speed, we do have a nice little equation here. It's the total distance divided by the total time. All right, so the total distance, notice that it's not just the average of the speeds. So if I run five meters a second for a while and then three meters per second for a while and one meter a second for a while, you can't just add up those three speeds and divide them because the times could be different, the, dif the dis distances are different. What you have to do is you have to find the total distance that you travel and divide by the total time. There's really no other good way to find the average speed, okay? Now, speed is related to distance which means it's a scalar and it doesn't need a direction. It also includes the whole path, right? So that's speed for you. Now I'm making a big deal about that because we're about to look at instantaneous velocity. Now velocity, a lot of people think velocity and speed are the same thing, right? They both are talking about how fast you're going. But in physics, when we talk about velocity, velocity is a vector, which means it needs to have both a magnitude, a value with units, and it needs to have a direction, 
right? Vectors have direction. And so it's important that we have both of those. So instantaneous velocity is almost exactly the same as the instantaneous speed, but it's also going to have a direction. Okay. Now, a, a good example to kind of help us differentiate these two is if we think about the speedometer in your car, right? When you're driving along, the speedometer in your car is showing you how fast you're going, right? And a lot of people think, oh, well, that's the same thing. Speed, velocity, it's all the same. No, the speedometer is called a speedometer for a reason because it shows you your instantaneous speed. It shows you how fast you're moving right now. Right? It doesn't show you how fast you're moving over the whole trip. It's not an average, so it's not this average speed. It shows you how fast you're moving right now. It doesn't give you a direction. And so it is not your instantaneous velocity. The speedometer on your car only shows you instantaneous speed. Now, a student in my class the other day said, well, yeah, but some cars on their dashboard, they have one of those things that show you the direction. Okay, awesome, but that's not part of the speedometer. Right? You can use that information to give yourself an instantaneous velocity. You can combine the information from your speedometer, which would give you the value, the magnitude, and then the direction, which is from your GPS or your compass or however else it does it, and you can use that then to determine what the direction is, and you can create your instantaneous velocity from that. Absolutely. All right? Uh, so that's instantaneous. Average velocity, just like average speed, we can create an, an equation right now for the average velocity. The average velocity is the displacement over the time. Okay? The displacement over the time. Now remember, displacement was a vector. We just talked about the fact that velocity is a vector too. So displacement over time. So remember, this means that we're not going to count the whole distance traveled. We're just looking at point A, initial point, final point. What is the straight line distance between those two? That's the displacement. And then we'll divide that by the amount of time. Again, I'll give you an example in just a minute, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Okay? One more definition for you. Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay? Acceleration is a change in velocity. That's how we define it. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity. Okay, now that does lead to a couple of interesting things. A lot of people think that acceleration is just speeding up. Sometimes it's used that way in normal kind of English, but that's not the way that we use the word acceleration in physics class. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity. You can feel acceleration. I want you to think about this. You're driving along the road in your car, and you come up to a stoplight. What happens? You hit this, the, the brake. Maybe, maybe you're not old enough to drive. You're not old enough to drive. Maybe your mom's the one driving the car, or your older brother, heaven forbid. So you're driving along, driving along, and slams on the brake. What happens? Your body goes forward. Why? Because the car is accelerating. You feel that acceleration. Okay? You actually don't feel it when you're just driving along at a constant speed. Think about that. Next time you're in the car, the car, yes, is vibrating, so you know the car is vibrating, right? You look out the window, you can see things passing by, so you're like, oh yeah, I'm moving. But if that weren't the case, other than the vibration of the car, you don't feel any moving forward or getting pushed back in a seat. That doesn't happen when you're moving at a constant speed. It only happens when you hit the brake to slow down and you feel the acceleration, or when the light turns green again and you're like, and you hit the gas pedal and you start speeding forward, right? In that situation, you feel pressed back into the seat. We'll talk about all those forces and stuff later, but for now, the fact that you can feel it, that means there's an acceleration, right? Now, that means that slowing down is acceleration. So is speeding up. They're both acceleration because they're both changing the velocity. Now, there's one more thing that's, that is acceleration because velocity, remember, is a vector, so it has direction too. So if I'm heading in this direction, and I'm going at a constant speed and I change to go over in this direction, my vector for velocity just changed. It was going forward, now it's going over in this direction. In order for my velocity to change, even though the number is the same, even though the speed is still the same, if the direction changes, my velocity vector just changed. And by definition, the velocity vector changing is 
acceleration. Okay. Now, going back to that idea of you can feel it, what happens when you're driving down the road and your mom or your brother or whoever or yourself, you turn the steering wheel, what happens? You feel like you're getting pushed through this. You feel, right? You feel because there's an acceleration. The acceleration, you know when acceleration is happening because you can feel it, all right? And so that's another evidence of that idea that changing directions is also acceleration because the velocity, that direction of velocity is changing and you can feel it, all right? All right, last of all, we got average acceleration here, okay? Average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time, okay? Now I use this notation here, this delta, hopefully you've seen that before either in math class or maybe in chemistry or something, if not, this triangle here is delta. That delta is from the Greek alphabet. We use it in mathematics to represent a change. And so what this is, is this is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. This is the final time minus the initial time. So it gives us a change in time and a change in velocity. It tells us how much it changed. Again, it doesn't, the path in between doesn't matter. Right? I could be speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, changing the rate, all these things. All that matters in the end is the beginning velocity and the end velocity. Now, this can get really complicated if there are changes in direction. All right? But just straight line, which is what we're going to start with, if we're just going kind of in a straight line, moving forward and backwards, okay, we recognize that this is something that we can deal with. We can find a, a value change in that velocity. Okay? All right, uh, one last thing that I want to kind of mention just so that you are comfortable with the notation, okay? Anytime we say average, sometimes we write it in that way, okay? We put a little line above it. Now, that line is not a vector line. The vector line has an arrow, and a vector is also bolded most of the time in our textbooks. That line above means average or mean. You may have seen that in math class as well. Same thing with average velocity here. We go average velocity. Now, chances are, if you're seeing this in your textbook, you're going to see kind of a bolded V there as a reminder that V is a vector, right? Um, it would be kind of awkward to have both the vector symbol and the average sign above. And so a lot of times they'll just do the bolding there so that it's clear. The other thing is, uh, you should hopefully know the difference between vector and, and speed anyway. Acceleration, of course, also a vector, can be written. Let me see if I can get this more or less bolded. And average. And so that represents the average there. Okay? Now, I promised an example. So let's uh, take an example really quick. The example that is my favorite to use is looking at a track. Right? I really don't like running around the track. I just feel like I'm going around and I get bored really easily. And I just can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, a little bit more happy running along the road where at least things are changing, but man, the track just drives me nuts. And I know some of you love that and that's fine. You love the feeling of the wind whipping through your hair and whatever else, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so uh, let's say this is a normal track. A normal track is about 400 meters. Right? We start here. This is the starting line. We run all the way around the track two times. Okay? Two times around the track. And that takes us three minutes. So two times, three minutes. All right? So let's see if we can calculate each of these. Okay? We're not going to worry about acceleration. We're going to assume that we're just going at a constant speed. We're going to simplify. We do that a lot in this class, and it's fine. Um, so let's say instantaneous speed and average speed should be the same if I'm going at a constant speed. So to get the average speed, what I'm going to need to do first is calculate my total distance. So if I go around the track twice, 400 meters, 800 meters. So that's 800 meters, right? 800 meters going around the track twice. And so I would say, well, I've gone around 800 meters, and then it says total time. Now we said that was three minutes to go around the track twice. 
All right, so three minutes around the track twice. We do want to try to make sure that we're doing this in the SI base units, which means we actually want seconds, not minutes. We do know there's 60 seconds in a minute, so three minutes is 180 seconds. So we take that 800 and we divide by 180 seconds. And then we can calculate and we can get an average speed, which I get 4.44. And because this is in meters, that's in seconds, my final units are in 4.44 meters a second. I don't need a direction because it's speed. This is the average speed, 4.44 meters a second. All right? Instantaneous velocity is going to be the same as instantaneous speed, except at any point in time, I'm going to have a direction. So when I'm down here running in that direction, I would be 4.44 meters per second to the right or the east, or whatever direction that is. When I get up here, it's going to be 4.44 meters per second up, or north, or whatever direction that is, right? And so when we talk about that instantaneous velocity, we want to make sure that we're adding in a direction, okay? Next of all, we got average velocity. So the average velocity is going to require us to do displacement over time. So displacement over time. So if I start here, and I go around once, go around twice, and I end here, what is my displacement? Remember, displacement is the straight line distance from the starting point to the ending point. Well, if I start and end at the same place, then the displacement is zero, isn't it? Because I started, and it doesn't matter that you did stuff in between. Remember, displacement doesn't consider everything else that happened in between. All that matters is your start and your end. And that's it. So our displacement is zero. Still 180 seconds, which means my average velocity is zero meters per second. And that's one of the reasons why I hate running around the track, because I finish and somebody's like, hey, what was your average velocity? Because people ask me that all the time. I'm like, dang, my average velocity was zero. That stinks. Right? So zero, average velocity, not cool. And you may say, well, how does that work, Mr. Bauer? You had 4.44 and 4.44 and 4.44 and 4.44. How are you getting zero? Remember, direction matters. If I've got a velocity to the right, and then up here, I have a velocity to the left, what happens when I add a 4.44 to the right and a 4.44 to the left? They cancel out, don't they? They end up giving me zero. Same thing with an up and a down and up to the left and a down to the, or sorry, that would be up to the right and a down to the left, right? They all cancel out. Even a nice, not a nice, even an ugly complicated path, if it starts and ends at the same point, all those vectors are gonna add together to cancel out. That's one of those things we learned in that lab, right? Is that when we add things up, it doesn't matter what order we add them up in, it's gonna give us the same result, right? So anyway, uh, that's, that's the idea of the average velocity, okay? We're not going to do acceleration just because we're going to say, well, uh, we're not going to speed up or slow down. The only acceleration here is going to come in when we turn, when we change directions, but we're not really quite ready to look at how we get that uh, direction yet, okay? The, the only other thing that I might say, you know, one of my other favorite examples is say, okay, so I finished running. And now I'm chilling here and a bee lands on my shoulder. And what do I do when a bee lands on my shoulder? You might just kind of swat it off. I go, Aah! and so I'm like, oh, Aah! and then I end up back where I am again. I'm like, did I get gone? What's my average velocity for that whole time that I'm running around like a lunatic? Well, if I start and end at the same place, my average velocity is zero. I'm tired, I'm sweaty, I'm freaked out because it's stupid B, but it doesn't matter. My average velocity, my displacement, both of those are zero if I start and end at the same point. Okay? All right, that's it. Hope that was helpful, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.